When are you a brother or when are you a mother? You staying alive, staying alive. Feel the city breaking and everybody shaking and staying alive, staying alive. Ha, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Ha, 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 staying alive. Ha, 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 Somebody help me out. <laughs> What's going on? Somebody help me. Yeah. Somebody help me, please, guys. Oh, my goodness. I do need help doing that. Why do I do this to myself? And more importantly, why do I do it to you? What's up, guys? It's Saturday, August 2nd, 3rd, 2024. Uh, we're at the Bitcoin block height of 855288 Today's Bitcoin price today is just under 61000 It's like 60900 something. And for $1, you can get about 1640 Satoshis for $1. My goodness, guys. Listen, welcome back to another episode of Satoshi Saturday. The official Satoshi Saturday. I think I'm the only one. <laughs> the dust satoshi saturdays and uh i want to get back to the basics today there's no no editing today i had to wait for the sun to go down because it is hot and i was sweating like kamala in a church <laughs> and uh it was hot today so i had to uh, chill out but uh i want to get back to the basics because i've been talking to a lot of people in my personal life and and in my internet life that i've been talking to on the phone and i don't know if it's my fault or not but i don't think i've been clear and i think i've assumed people's uh expertise at satoshis and bitcoin so we're gonna get back to the basics now listen if you haven't seen my other satoshi saturday videos i think this is episode number 25 as you guys know i'm not that <laughs> good with numbers but uh go back and watch the other ones this is specifically for Satoshis. It is Bitcoin, obviously, but a Satoshi is a very small unit of Bitcoin. It's like a penny on a dollar, except it's 100 million of them in one Bitcoin. And I want to get back to the basics, really get back to the basics. Now, I want to apologize up front to the people who has knowledge, you know, you know, up there and know a lot of things. And uh, but I want to get back to the basics, to the grassroots, so people understand what Satoshis are and how important they are. They are. So. Everybody pretty much knows what Bitcoin is, right? It's a digital money. That's what it is. It's money for the internet. You know, every country has its own currency. And Bitcoin is just a currency, a digital currency for the internet. Anybody can use it as long as they have the inter it, you know, internet connection, you know, on a phone and stuff like that. So that's what it is, right? Now, why was it created? It was created in 2008. Uh, early, I think it was in January 2008, they started it. Uh, him, her, them, whatever, Satoshi Nakamoto started it, and I believe January 2008, and then wrote the, the Bitcoin white paper in 2008, October 31st, 2008, to be exact. And they, and they created it for uh, one or two reasons. The, the main reason is, is our money is broken, okay? inflation is is bad in the in the world right and it just so happened that during the remember the housing crash of 2008 when the banks were uh running amok and then they got bailed out by the government and they gave them all the money and then we ended up paying for it well they printed a bunch of money nothing is for free guys if you get something you know out of thin air money because money cannot be created or destroyed so when you get quote unquote free money it's not free right? Somebody has to pay for that, no matter what. And the government printed a lot of money. And this happened in several places on the planet. And so uh, what Satoshi Nakamoto did, him, her, or they, or them, uh, they created a digital money that was scarce. There's only 21 million Bitcoin in the entire world, okay? That's it. That's, that's all there are. And remember, all there is. And remember, there's 100 million units in every, in every Bitcoin. Now, you see what I said in the beginning, that uh, Bitcoin's price is $60,000. Well, you can buy Satoshis uh, for $1 uh, 
uh, at a clip of 1,640 of them for $1. You don't have to buy a full Bitcoin, right? So they created it, Satoshi Nakamoto created it to uh, get a, have a different system of money, right? This is a completely different system. It's a, it's a completely different, uh, it's, a, it's a new paradigm shift, right? It's almost a liking of when the internet came out, right? When the internet was a new technology, uh, when the car first came out versus the horse and buggy, uh, you know, the telephone, uh, you know, different te technological things that come out. It just, it, it it's so much better than the old thing, but people are so used to the old thing that it's hard to uh, compete with that. Uh, with the, with the, with the mindset of people that people have. And most people, most people, uh, as my friend likes to tell me, is not are not going to take advantage of Bitcoin. They're just not. Now, it's going to be a good money for savings because if you do save today in U.S. dollars, um, you're going to lose your purchasing power because, like I said earlier, with the banks, they print money. That's where inflation is. Inflation is not prices going up, guys. Inflation is when the government prints dollars. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I use this example about five or six times this week. I'm going to use it. This example for you guys, <clears throat> real life example. Take your salary for the month or a week or every two weeks or whatever you make, right? So some people get paid in different ways. Some people get paid on the first, some people get paid, you know, weekly, monthly or whatever, or bi-weekly, right? Now take that payday, you know, that payment amount you make. Now, let's say you want to buy lunch and your lunch is $13 or four, you know, whatever it is, right? Now, you know the set amount that you make every pay period or month or whatever. You know what that is, right? Now you take that $13 and say, okay, what percentage of my pay is this meal? And ask yourself that and do the math right now. You know, do it with a calculator and say, okay, it's this amount, you know, it's 3% of my pay or whatever, right? And you know that because you know what you got paid, you know what, you, what it is, and then you know what you paid for the lunch, right? Now you know that. Now let's use the money situation I talked about with the government. Now let's say I handed you $1 million cash. It's a lot of money, right? It is. So I gave you $1 million of cash. I said, listen, I'm gonna give you this money, but you have to answer two questions. If you get them right, you get this money. He said, okay. First question is, how many US dollars, just like the ones I'm about to give you with the million dollars, how many US dollars were printed today? And while you're thinking about that question, here's my second question. How many U.S. dollars are there in the world? Not just in the United States, but all over the world. How many physical printed dollars are there? Number one, that first part of that. Number two is how many U.S. dollars are printed on a screen, on a computer screen or your phone or something like that or on bank ledgers? The answer is I don't know. Or you can guess an answer, but nobody knows. And the reason why is no one has any idea how much the money there is of the money supply of U.S. dollars. We don't know. And I'm just talking about the U.S. dollars. I'm not talking about uh, the ruble or the, you know, any other currency in the world. There's 180 something of them. Just the United States dollar, the most powerful one. And we have no idea what we, they printed today. Now, obviously, you would lose that. You wouldn't get the million dollars. Now, I would say, listen, <clears throat> Let me give you a million Satoshis, one million Satoshis, right? Now, let me ask you a question, same questions. How many Satoshis were printed today? Now, if you watch my old videos, and I've talked about this, uh, we mint about 3.125 every 10 minutes when you mine them, right? So every day, because every 10 minutes, that happens about 144 times a day, right? You take 3.125, use your calculator right now, and write this stuff down too, guys. You take the 3.125 and then you times it by 144. Because remember, there's 10 in 10 minutes, there's 144 times that happens in a 24 hour period. Roughly, okay? So what, what numbers you come up with? You come up with 450? Right. Now remember, there's 100 million Satoshis. So you take 100 million times it by 450, and that's the number that was made today. So you'd have the number, you know how many Satoshis, or you could just say 450 Bitcoin. It's a big number. Second question is, what percent of the, of the money supply do you own? Because remember, Bitcoin is money. It is money, it's digital money, it's money for the internet, money for everybody. Then you say, okay, same math, guys. <laughs> you take that million, 
and say, okay, I have a million Satoshis. And Jerry told me there's 21 million Bitcoin and there's 100 million Satoshis in each Bitcoin. So that's 2.1 quadrillion for 8 billion people to share, by the way. And some of them are lost and all that, but let's just not even play that game. You got 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis and you own 1 million of them. You can figure it out, right? You get the number, you use your calculator, and boom, there it is. And I'd hand you the million Satoshis. That's the difference between Bitcoin and US dollars. And again, I'm only talking about US dollars. Now let's play another game. <clears throat> let's play inflation versus deflation. All right? again, we're getting back to the basics, bare bone basics, okay? <clears throat> what is inflation again? Say it with me. It's the increase of money supply, right? Let's say it again. Inflation is not prices going up. It's the increase of the money supply, which means that the base is your money. So if I had gave you that million dollars and I didn't ask you those questions and you just, I, I gave you the million bucks, let's just say they were printing, you know, 10 billion a day or something like that, which is, you know, it's probably more than that, right? What's that doing with your, what's that doing to your million dollars that you have? If they're printing a billion or 10 billion or whatever they're doing every single day. What's it doing to it? Is it staying the same? No. Is it increasing its purchasing power, that million dollars? No. It's decreasing your purchasing power. Why? Because it's more dollars putting in, put, that is put in the system chasing the same amount of goods. So it lowers the value or decreases the value of your said $1 million. Now let's do the opposite. That's inflation. Now let's say I gave you a million Satoshis. Now, can they print any more Bitcoin? No, it's only 21 million. It's, it's written in code, guys. It's written in code. But why is it deflationary? Okay, it's not inflationary, Jerry. You said deflationary. Yes, I did. Well, um, there are coins that have been, lo have been lost. Did you know that? Now, again, for the people that are already <laughs> know this stuff, I'm sorry. But, again, I got to get down to the bare bone basics. People lose Bitcoin. And how do they lose it? And leave, leave comments in the comment section, guys. Help me out to uh, teach the new people. What happens is there are people that uh, lose their passcode or the uh, passphrase or key phrase. Um, some people lose their phones because they have it on the phone or something like that. And those, and those keys are lost forever. And people in the early days of Bitcoin, uh, once you get down the rabbit hole, you'll understand. But I'm just going to give you the basics uh, information. People have lost millions of coins uh, even before... Uh, Bitcoin started getting into the tens of thousands of dollars. So there's roughly estimated about three to five million that have been lost. Something like that. Depends on the uh, article or whoever's you know saying it. It depends. I've heard different numbers. But over the years, in the in incoming years, people are going to lose Bitcoin. Okay. At roughly about a one to four percent clip. That's what I heard. Because these people are just going to die with their with their keys. Because once you're Bitcoin is in the blockchain. And again, you'll learn this later. Once it's in the blockchain and you have that 12 or 24 words, nobody can steal it from you. It's impossible to break. You have the the, the words in your head <laughs> and you can't uh, lose, your, lose your Bitcoin to anyone else unless you forget your code or something like that. But if you die with it, nobody can get it. And then you've... Uh, <laughs> made a lot of Bitcoiners happy, not that you died, but because you've increased the purchase of power of your million dollars or that person, because every time Bitcoin is lost, that means it's the opposite of being money being printed. It's less of the money supply out there. So you have a bigger percentage of the money supply than you did before. Think about that. Because remember the max supply is only 21 million. So ask yourself this, ask yourself this, Whatever your asset is or whatever you're investing in, ask yourself this very important question. What percentage of the money supply do you own, right? If you own some stocks, some bonds, some real estate, uh, I don't know, anything that you own, whatever, traditional finance, US dollars, whatever, ask yourself, how many of these things that I have, how many of them are there and what percent percentage of the money supply or that supply do I own? What, how many do I have? And I bet I know the answer. You're not going to know. You're definitely not going to know how many 
new or how many more that are created. If you have, you have real estate, you don't have any idea how many new houses are being created. You know, unless you have like a, you know, property in Malibu or something like that. I'm just talking about a uh, regular house. So that's, so that's the basics on that, right? That's, that's, you gotta know that stuff first. You gotta lay the foundation. You gotta have a strong foundation to stand on if you, you, you understand Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, relatively speaking, is at a low price right now. Now, not compared to the bear market, but right now it's 60 something thousand. With all this stuff going on, guys, if you haven't watched the news, Donald Trump is endorsing Bitcoin. You got all these uh, politicians, you got all these, you know, ETFs, you got uh, companies putting it on their balance sheet. Uh, I just heard, uh, I think it was Wells Fargo, I think, uh, with like five or six trillion in assets under management. Correct me if I'm wrong, it wasn't Wells Fargo. I don't have it in front of me. They're going to send their 15,000 <laughs> sales agents to sell Bitcoin. And not because of the reasons we do it. They're doing it because they get a they get a percentage when they hold your assets. But the best way to buy it is not through any of that stuff. Not through ETFs. Not through uh, these these companies. Just buy it and then you know put it on on a cold storage. Best way to do that is is hit Tony up from the Bitcoin way. I got a link down there to set you up once you learn how to do it. <clears throat> if you're uh, <laughs> technology. In, uh, not good with it like me. <laughs> he, he helped me set it up. Tony's a good guy. So a lot of these things going on. The price is low, relatively speaking. Uh, you know, the price is getting ready to shoot up because what did I tell you before about the money printing? Uh, the Federal Reserve and the Fed, they're going to get ready and print a bunch of money. In the next few weeks, when this next Fed meet is going to happen, what are they going to do? They're going to, they're going to, because they've been paused for a long time with the interest rates. They're going to lower the interest rates, right? Because it's, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. If they really wanted to lower inflation, there's only one way to do it. <clears throat> you have to increase uh, the interest rates higher, up to or higher than the actual, the real inflation, not the BS they tell you about, not the CP lie numbers. <clears throat> and what are they going to do? They're going to lower the interest rates by a quarter or 50 bits. And then they're going to start printing again. And when they start printing, what, what did we talk about earlier? That's inflation. And when more dollars come into the system, what's going to happen to, the, to your Bitcoin and your Satoshis? Okay. It's not about the U.S. dollar prices. It's all about your purchasing power of those said Satoshis. So I don't know how many Satoshis you have right now, right? But according to BitcoinPerPerson.com, uh, look that up, BitcoinPerPerson.com. Uh, I'll leave the link in the, in the description. I believe it's 240 five thousand or something like that satoshis you can have which will cost you like a hundred or something bucks to get your fair share it's actually a lot less than that but if you get yourself a million satoshis you'll be cooking with grease guys you will be a millionaire i talked about that in my uh, pilot video of my satoshi saturday i did that in september and you're going to notice that back then i think the price was 26 bucks uh not 26 bucks it was 26 bucks for 100,000. So it was 26,000 or 27,000, something like that for Bitcoin. And now it's basically uh, almost triple that. And again, it's not about the cuck bucks. It's about the purchasing power. If you don't know what a cuck buck is, that's a US dollar. And I call it a, a cuck buck because you have to be a cuck to save in those bucks. <laughs> you really do. So people say stack harder. That's true, you should stack harder. But only if you study harder. Right. Most people, most people, like my friend says, are not going to buy Bitcoin early, just like they didn't buy, get into the Internet early or Amazon or all these different technologies. But you have a chance today. We're at the stage of when the Internet was probably in 1995 or something like that. We're not even at a half a percent adoption. And the price of one Bitcoin right now, sixty thousand dollars. Right. That means. <laughs> people would rather have 60,000 rather have one bitcoin than $60,000 and the price is going to be going up here real soon it always goes up every four years so the most important thing guys you got to study it you have to study it I mean I, I can't say that enough I keep saying the same thing I'm not telling anybody to buy satoshis <laughs> I'm just not and how do you study it uh, read some books if, if you like to read if you don't like to read get a, get an audible account with uh amazon and get some audible, audible books and listen to them 
watch some podcasts, learn everything you need to know about Bitcoin. And I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this for over three and a half years. Um, <clears throat> I haven't done 210,000 blocks yet. That's a cycle. And again, learn that, write that down. 210,000 blocks. That's an epoch. I'm almost there. I'm at 180 something, I believe. Thousand uh, blocks. Once you get a cycle under your belt, then see, you know, how much purchase of power your Bitcoin is or your Satoshis are, you know. But what's going to happen in the future with your Satoshis? I mean, if you study Satoshis like I do, and then and you're in the in the belief in the camp that Bitcoin and Satoshis are going to be the thing that I think it's going to be, which is I believe it's going to be the base layer of money. All these problems that we have on the on this physical world, it all has to do with broken money, and we have to fix it. And Bitcoin's the way. I thought it was gold and silver when I first started. I'm glad I got into gold and silver at first. But then I realized we're not going to pass around uh, silver and gold coins in a digital world. That's analog thinking, even though I'm an older guy. But I think uh, Bitcoin in the next few decades is going to be the money. And it's going to be divisible by Satoshis. And people are going to be spending Satoshi. You, you mark my words. Not this cycle, but I believe the next cycle, the next 210,000 blocks, Epoch 6, I believe we would be going to a store mainstream in the year 2030, 2031 or something like that. And you'll be able to purchase things in Bitcoin. It may happen late this cycle. Who knows? I, I don't know. But it'll be happening soon. But your main thing, and I'm telling you, if you want to change your, your family's lineage in life, is you got to study this stuff, man. Study hard. Forget the stacking hard bullshit. Study your ass off of this stuff, man. Don't be like everybody else. Turn off the freaking TV. Stop messing around on TikTok and Instagram and other, other stuff. <laughs> Turn it off and study and work your butt off because this is not a once in a generation or once in a lifetime opportunity. This is literally a once in a species opportunity. And I mean that. And you may not understand that now because you haven't put the study, put the work in and studied. But get your hundred hours under your belt, right? Get the bare bone basics, basics down pack and I'm here to help you. If you need help, Send me an email. My email's in the description box. I help people all the time for free, by the way. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And again, guys, <clears throat> it's not about the now. You got to do something today, today, that your future self and your family will thank you for. They will be building statues of you in the future. And I'm serious. I'm not joking, right? Because they're going to ask you, if you don't take the time and study Satoshis and turn off that garbage you're watching and stop wasting time, they're going to ask you, auntie, grandpa, uncle, mom, grandpa, grandma, how come you didn't buy Bitcoin? How come we don't have any? What was the price when you found out about it? How come you didn't do anything with it? How come? What are you going to say to him? Well, I watched Jerry's show, Satoshi Saturday, and I said, decided, nah, after the show was over, I just turned it off. That's all I did. Take the time. Don't believe me. Don't trust verify. That's a that's a statement we see in, in Bitcoin. I make these Satoshi Saturday videos because I know it's not going to be about the Bitcoin. Because Bitcoins are going to be so expensive. They're going to be in the millions of dollars. And I know that sounds crazy to say that in the 60000 range. I know that. But I'm telling you that's what it's going to be. And it's not about the U.S. dollars. It's about the Satoshis. And I want you, if you're thinking about dollars and cuck bucks... Look at your Satoshis like U.S. dollars. You can get 1600 plus for one measly dollar. And what are you going to tell your family if you don't? What are you going to tell them? This video is getting long. I love you guys. You know that I'm doing this because our future depends on it. We're going through a lot of turmoil, turmoil in this country. The central bank digital currencies are on the way. If you don't know what those are, Google them. And uh, we need to do it. We need to spread the word about Bitcoin right now. But it first starts with you, with you, the man and the woman or the woman in the mirror. It starts with you. Sorry, guys, I get passionate about this. So this is what I need you guys to do. 99% of the population, I'm telling you this, maybe 98% at the, at the, at the least <clears throat> will be working for Satoshis. But you're here now. It's, it's your choice. You could, you could turn this off and do what the hell you want to do and not study it and just go on to the next stupid video. 
but God put you here for a reason and you need to study because if you don't, <laughs> you'll be doing what I always say. But if you do, you need to do this right here. And I say it a thousand times. Stack Satoshi today, today, guys. So you don't have to work for those same Satoshis tomorrow. I love each and every one of you and I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love, guys.